Hello my soccer universe. If you love outsiders and if you love tons of goals, the Conference League yesterday delivered. And having both of the competition, the Conference League and the Europa League played at the same time, well, probably the, uh, the Europa League games were a tad bit more interesting from the names that were involved. All the action was actually happening in the Conference League. There was really end-to-end. Uh, -end. They were switching f back and forth between the games. They barely got out of the Conference League because there were so many goals scored. And it was also an evening for the outsiders with a big shocker at Villa Park where Olympiacos beat Aston Villa 4-2. An absolute shocker, the Greek sensation continues. They want to, of course, win a European trophy or play at least a European final at their rival stadium. I am not sure what a good idea that is, given the very good relations between uh, the, the clubs involved. But um, it will definitely make for an interesting atmosphere. I think it will be something very underreported if that should happen. Villa probably not quite out of it, but they have a steep hill to climb. That's for sure. It also means, yes, the one team that I'm missing here is Olympiacos and I'm still uh, very annoyed that the one shirt that I ordered uh, pretty much the day after Olympiacos got uh, through, I have not received yet. And I think this guy is cheating me, but that's now my personal problem. Club Rouge also really gave a scare to Fiorentina and I think this tie is definitely not over. It hangs very much in, in, in the balance despite Fiorentina winning it late. And again, goal scoring is letting Fiorentina down big time as it has all season long because they are a really good side to watch. I, they cannot put the round thing into the uh, rectangle there. It's really, really annoying if you're a Fiorentina fan. Uh, so there, there you go. But Club Rouge is also very, very much alive. And I actually, I wouldn't mind seeing a Belgian side in the final as well, given what a historic club Club Rouge actually is as well. But let's start at Villa Park. Oh, what a crazy game. I mean, Villa came out storming, had an early goal. And then they're called out on the counter. El Kabi always on the offside line. Hovering, but staying onside. And uh, his opening goal was given initially for offside, but no, it was not. Chiquinho plays it through and he nets it in and goes right through the Olympiacos fans, celebrating right there. I also have to mention this was a horrible, an absolutely horrible jersey matchup. I mean, thankfully, there were white pants with Villa. Because it was really hard, hard, hard to distinguish this side. There was way too much orange on the uh, Villa shirt, uh, on the Olympiacos shirt, and also the gray. It just didn't uh, vibe, vibe well. I think if Olympiacos would have worn uh, their white and blue or whatever or, or, uh, from last season, something, even if they wear their home jersey, I think there would have been better contrast than with this one. It was absolutely horrific to watch. Again, you had to focus a lot. It was a great game. But it was really hard to watch uh, and distinguish what's hap hap happening, especially when there were a uh, congregation of players. In any case, uh, the Polish plays into El, El Cabo in the 29th minute, completely shocked Villa Park, Olympiakos up 2 0. However, Villa not being deterred, uh, really trying everything to get back in into the game, and just before they have all Oli Watkins after the RB assist, makes it 1 2. Start of sec second half, it's an onslaught by Villa and they get the equalizer through Diaby after missing already a few good, good chances. Uh, goalie uh, Tulakis did not look good and now I remember his name. Uh, did not look good at, uh, because it went in between him and the post. That should not happen but it's level. And at that moment I think everyone thought this is only gonna go one way. Villa is gonna win this and gonna win this big. However, then Douglas Lewis makes a stupid handball, and yes, there's not much he can do, but you know, if you're out with the hand, unfortunately these days this is given as a handball. And the referee Guida immediately pointed to the spot. Immediately. Unlike the Fiorentino game, uh, that, that we'll see a little bit later. So yeah, penalty in Al Kawi makes his hat trick. Uh, it's 3-2 and if there was any chance, this shocked Villa a little bit and Eze uh, from a far range shot that got deflected. I know Robin Olsen didn't look good there, uh, but still. It is 4-2 Olympiacos. 
And Villa then tried. They tried as they may, but Olympiacos actually were always threat. The threat threat again. Huge credit to coach Man- Mandy Lieber, the guy who brought the European Yes into Sevilla and is then sacked shortly thereafter. Uh, because of a string of bad results, this was not necessarily his fault. It has to be clearly, clearly said. And he took over mid-season at Olympiacos and is leading them in a, again, potentially to European glory. It could have been a little bit tighter because there was another hands penalty given. Douglas Lewis wants to step up and makes up for his, wants to make up for his miss, or for his handball before, but he misses. So Lucas doesn't even, you know, he's there, but Douglas Lewis puts it wide and it's a damning evening for Villa again because Villa are probably a better side if a uh, player by player you wouldn't count them out I mean uh, my model still gives them a 9% chance of advancing However, it's a really really steep hill to climb and going into the hell of Piraeus that's gonna be that's gonna be an interesting evening that much is for certain. And I think it will also uh, be an interesting evening at the Jan Breidel Stadium in uh, Bruges. Because for all the great play that Fiorentina can put on, I've said it before, I will say it again, <laughs> they don't have a goal scorer. And yes, Sotil scores a brilliant opening goal. Fiorentina look really in control of the entire match. And then uh, it's a stupid handball by uh, Biragi. <sighs> ball is out personally if you ask me this one especially this type of thing it's from such a short distance uh, and the ball hits here I think uh, referee Oliver was right with his initial thoughts that this is not a handball uh, but by the letter of the law it is so I think if you're in defense cannot complain Hans Van Aken, who else converts it and it's 1-1 uh, that kind of settled the game a teeny tiny bit. Belotti is unable to re-establish the lead for Fiorentina just before the half. And as I said, I think Fiorentina overall a much more uh, composed side and a very nice to watch side. However, this Bruges team is one that uh, has been surprising so far and is really a hard out. And this is huge credit to them. I really like their fight and that they, they can strike at almost no chance. I thought that the game might tip squarely in the Fiorentina's favor and on, on Yadika, I had to look him up here, uh, got two yellow, yellow cards just within three minutes, he sent off. At that moment I think every Fiorentina uh, fan would think, okay, we're gonna win this one, 3-1, one, 4-4-1 four, four, one, and we can book uh, tickets for Athens. Anything but it was uh, a Spillers uh, with a really deep ball. Thiago's just uh, on the inside of the half. Runs to the Fiorentina goal and there are defenders there, but no one is really taking him on. He makes a shot in 63rd minute. Two minutes after, they went down, down the man. He gets an equalizer. And Italiano is throwing everything on. But Bruges seems to hold out on this one. In the end, Fiorentina do get the winner through Nzola, uh, who had hit the post. Ball falls back, back to him and he puts it back in. Uh, but this was labored. This was labored and I honestly would say, despite Fiorentina having now that lead, uh, the higher rated team, that's why they have almost 70% chance of going to, to the final. And yes, remember last year, in uh, they also lost the home leg against Basel and then had to come back. So, you know, there has been precedence that Fiorentina can weather this rough atmosphere. However, this Bruges team, I think, is something else. And this Fiorentina team is not trending the right way. So I wouldn't really count uh, Bruges out. I, it would be a sensation, but a Bruges Olympiacos final is definitely on the cards. That would be an interesting one, that's for sure. In any case, please. Let me know what you're thinking going forward. Do we get the final of rank outsiders between Greece and Belgium? And I, will, I was thinking, if Olympiacos play against Club Bruges in the final, Olympiacos are the home team, then nominally they will play in red and white. Could Bruges then play in their home jerseys? And I bought this jersey thinking that they will play against Villa. So we have an away jersey. Yeah, those are my thoughts. They are crazy, but we'll see. I might have to get more stuff from Club Rouge. If you see a cheap one, let me know. In any case, please, 
give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. You saw I'm pulling out <laughs> all my Fiorentina stuff and all my Villa stuff, but they might go go away. It will be just Club Rouge uh, being left over in the Conference League. Definitely an interesting comp 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 competition. I think there's a lot of stuff in this one. Uh, again, thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!